Linear regression is a very commonly used technique within machine learning and statistics. It is used for obtaining a line of best fit through a data set, and from that line we can make predictions on a target feature based on another feature within that data set. However, when doing a linear regression, we often assume that the x and the y variables are on a linear scale. However, in the case of petrophysics, we may have one of the variables logarithmically scaled. So how do we apply a linear regression to a semi-log scatterplot? Well, that's what we're going to find out in today's video. Hey friends, I'm Andy, and if you already knew that, then welcome back to the channel. Within petrophysics, we often want to derive a continuous permeability, and one of the most common ways to do that is to use core measured porosity and permeability, and then derive a relationship between the two features, and then use that relationship to make predictions on permeability from a log-derived porosity. When we plot this data on a poral perm crossplot, we have our x variable, which is our porosity, on a linear scale. And then on the y-axis, we have our permeability, which is scaled logarithmically. And this is because the values range from such a small value of around 0.01 millidarsis and can range all the way up into the thousands of millidarsis. So when we try to apply a line of best fit through the data, we need to take into consideration this variation in scale. So in today's video, we're going to look at how to apply a linear regression to this type of data, and then we can use that line to make predictions. So let's hop over to our Jupyter Notebook and see how we can do this. So the first step we're going to do is import the libraries that we're going to be working with. In this particular tutorial, we're going to be working with pandas, which is imported as pd, matplotlib.pyplot, which is imported as plt, seaborn, which is imported as SNS, NumPy as NP, and we're going to be using linear regression from sklearn.linearmodel. Then we're going to import the data, which is a set of core data that has been acquired from a well bore in the Norwegian North Sea. And you may be familiar with this well name if you've seen my previous videos, and that is a well from the Volve data set, which is an excellent data set if you want to get started with either petrophysics, machine learning, geoscience, or anything related to well log data. We're next going to parse any missing values which are represented by a single space, and we're going to turn them into nans, or not a number, and these are our null values. And we're also going to use specific columns from our data set. In this case, we're going to be using depth, CPOR, CKHL, and CGD. So that's core porosity, core permeability, and core grain density. Once we've run that, we can then call upon df.info to view the information about the data frame. We can see that we've got a mixture of uh, different lengths here that are non-nulls. So what we can do is we can drop those nans, and we can do it simply by calling df.dropna in place is equal to true. And then we'll call upon df.info again. All of the columns are now an equal length of actual values rather than having nulls. So we can quickly view our data. Now I've copied this code from my previous video which focuses on displaying data on a seaborne plot using a semi-log scale. So if you want to see how that's all done and the background to that, then check out the previous video on the channel and you'll see the, the details behind this. So here we're, set, we're creating a scatter plot using our porosity and our permeability as well as our core grain density. And we're going to be colouring it using yellow, orange, red. And that is just the colour palette we're going to be displaying the data with. We then set the y-axis to logarithmic. And we set the x and y labels to what they actually are, rather than the curve names in the data frame. So we can quickly run this. And what we get back is a nice scatter plot of our core permeability versus core porosity. And we can see that we've got a nice spread through the data from our low porosity and low permeability intervals, which are likely our shales or tighter intervals, up to our more higher permeability and higher porosity intervals, which is likely our reservoir zones. So normally before we would do any analysis on this, we would start identifying what data points are bad points or which plugs have been fractured which could result in a high porosity or a high permeability, and the results may be off. So for this data set, I'm just going to assume that it's all okay at the moment. And what we want to do is run a linear regression through this data. So we want a straight line from somewhere down here up to here. And this gets us a formula that we can use to predict permeability from our log porosity. And this is a common technique or a common part of the petrophysical workflow. 
So the next step is to extract our values from the data frame. So we're going to extract an X and a Y value. So our X value, and we call upon our data frame, and we're going to select CPOR, and we're going to convert them to values. So if I delete that Y and run the cell and then display X, what we get back is an array of values. And this is what the linear regression model requires. And we can do something similar to uh, the Y axis or the Y data that we're going to be using, which is our core permeability or CKHL. And we can do df.ckhl and we will also do dot values. So if I run that again and then view the Y values, we can see that we've got an array. But the problem is that these values have such a wide range from down here about 0.01 millidarcy all the way up to about 10,000 millidarcies. So what we can do just to help with the linear regression to, so that we can get a nice straight line on this particular plot where we've got a semi-log axis where one axis is logarithmic and the other is linear, or we need to calculate the log 10 of it. And we can do that by calling up an np.log10. And we will now see that we've got much smaller values that we can work with for this linear regression. If we look at x.shape, we can see that we have 557 values. But before we go on to running the linear regression model, we need to reshape these NumPy arrays. So if I do x is equal to x dot reshape minus one by one, and then call upon x dot shape again, we will now see that we've got 557 by one. And if we call upon x, we now have this array where we've just got almost like one column of data. If we had multiple columns, say we had two variables in here, we would have 557 by two, and we would have another set of data appearing here on the right. So we just need to do this reshape in order to get the linear regression model to work correctly. So if I do y is equal to y dot reshape minus one by one, and then again, we can check y dot shape. We can see it's 557 by one. So next we need to create our model. And we can do that by creating a variable called model, which is equal to linear regression, and then the parentheses. And that is going to be the model that we're going to be working with. So if we call upon model, we can see that it's just simply an, an object called linear regression. So we're not much use there, but there are a number of functions of, uh, available for that. And one of them that we're going to use is dot fit. And then we're going to pass in our X and our Y values. And what this is going to do is fit a linear regression to our data. And we can run that. And then if we want, we can get the uh, R squared value of our regression, which is model.score. And we pass in X and Y. And then we call upon R squared and we get back an R squared value of about 0.71. If we want to get the other variables, such as the intercept and the coefficients of our data, we can easily do that by calling upon model.intercept. And notice that there's an underscore at the end, uh, so be aware of that when writing intercept, and we can get back a value of minus 1.791. If we want to get the slope or the coefficients of the regression, we can simply call upon model.coef underscore. So as we're just doing a simple linear regression with one X variable, we only have one value coming back. But if we did a multi-linear regression, we would have multiple coefficients corresponding to each of the variables we used in the regression. So the next step is to create the regression equation. So we can do one of two things. So if we want a nice equation that we can see and visualize so that we've got the coefficients along with the, the intercept, we can write out the regression equation and put that in a formatted string and we can say 10 to the power of and then we put in the brackets and we put in model dot coef underscore and we'll go into our data into the first element and then the first element of that and you can see that we've got two square brackets uh, around this data so the first zero is going into the first bracket and coming back with this 
value here with the square brackets. And then the second one is going into that list much deeper and it's extracting the actual numbers or the value from here rather than bringing in the brackets. And then we're going to add on the model intercept. And again, we just do that with the, the curly braces and we'll set model.intercept underscore and we will call upon uh, zero. And when we run that and call upon it, we can see that we get the regression equation out. So this is useful if you're wanting to put it into a report. So you may just change these double asterisks or the multiply signs to a little upward pointing chevron. And then over here, you may just need to change the sign. So plus and a negative makes it a negative. So that gets us the regression equation. We could technically use that equation if we just formatted it slightly different to predict our permeability. But we can do it another way. And what we're going to do is we're going to create a continuous line that we can display on our plot. So if I create a variable called x underscore plot vals is equal to np dot arrange 0 by 50, what this is going to do is it's going to create an evenly spaced array between 0 and 50. Now, if you've got a log porosity, what you would do is you would set your porosity here, and then in the next line, we would predict on that porosity. But as we're just wanting to display a straight line here on our plot, and we don't have a log porosity, then we can use this dummy data. So y underscore pred for our prediction, and then we call upon model dot predict, and then we pass in our x underscore plot valves, and we just need to reshape it. And as we have, if I call upon this variable, ypred, we can see that the values are negative and also very small. We need to raise 10 to the power of ypred to get back to permeability values, which will be y underscore pred underscore log is equal to 10. And then we do ypred, and if we call upon ypred log, so we put it back to its original values, our original scale. We then can see that we've got a series of small values up to large values. So to keep things simple, what I'm going to do is create a data frame with the X values that we've just created along with the predicted values. And this just makes it easier when we come to plotting the data and keeps everything within the data frame structure. So to do that, I've created a results underscore data frame and then creating a new data frame. And with that, what I'm doing is creating a column called pour underscore valves, and then a column called perm underscore valves. And then I'm just flattening the array for the prediction. And when we call upon that, we can then see that we've got our pour values and our permeability values. And if we want to view this on a plot, what we can do is we can go down to this bottom part here, and we're using the same code that we had earlier, where we've got the scatter plot, and now we want to add on a line plot and we will set the x values as equal to results df and we will set it to pour underscore valves and the y axis is going to be results df and then we're setting the perm underscore valves and we'll also set the color as equal to black and when we run that code what we get back is a nice scatter plot where we've got our points here, and we've also got a regression line, which appears as a nice straight line on this semi-log scatter plot. And there we have it, we've seen how to apply a linear regression to our data set, where we have one of our variables linearly scaled and the other variable logarithmically scaled. So if you've enjoyed today's video, be sure to give it a thumbs up down below. And if you want to see more content from this channel, be sure to click on that subscribe button and dig that notification bell. So thanks for watching, and until next time, bye for now.